Now, the first step of configuring the kind of global API that we're talking about is to set up health checks. Because a part of the consideration that we want to have here is we want to make sure that we are sending our users to an API that is active and behaving as it should be. So what we need to do first is create a health check. Now, we're going to create one for each endpoint. And in this case, we're going to use HTTP. We're actually using HTTPS. And we're going to do it by domain name. And so what we want to check here first, we're just going to go in and I'm just going to grab this domain first. Actually, I'm going to grab the whole thing. And we are going to copy it. And then we are going to go into Route 53. I'm just going to paste this in. Now, we obviously need to remove some of this. We're going to take our path out and we're going to paste our path down here at the bottom. And then we are going to remove HTTPS from the beginning. And this gives us, this gives us what we need here. And we are wanting port 443. We can click on Advanced Configuration. And we're just going to use, at this point, standard. You could probably uh, use fast and be fine as long as you configure uh, your TTL correctly uh, for your, your different DNS entries, which we'll talk about in a minute. And we're going to set this failure threshold at 3. And you also have several different options to enable here. You could do string matching to where your service needs to return a specific string. But what we're going to do at this point is we're just going to assume that we're going to use status codes to indicate whether or not our service is healthy. Now, there's a couple things you need to consider. You probably want to create a dedicated serverless function that is going to be for your health check. And what that is going to need to do, you're going to have to bake into that health check something that checks the health of all of the services that it depends on. Let me give you an example. If we just created a service that returned a string, and that was all it did for our health check, our serverless stack might be completely healthy. API Gateway might be healthy. It might be, the Lambda might be healthy. That's great, but the thing is you need to think of all the services that you're leveraging downstream. If for some reason DynamoDB stops working in US East 1 and your health check doesn't take that into account, then in that case, your health check is not accurate in determining the health of that endpoint. Now, you can do this a couple of different ways. You could do multiple health checks, but you need to understand your health check is going to get called a lot. And so you need to factor that in when you're thinking about things like your DynamoDB read and write capacity, right? Especially your read capacity, if that's what your health check is taking into account. So in this case, we're going to set this up and we're going to call this because we're using AP um, uh, Southeast One as, as our demo here. We're going to call this one. This is going to be our um, AP Southeast One health check. Perfect, so we now have a health check that is configured for this endpoint, and that gives us what we need, okay? And so now that we have that in place, we are now going to save this. And in this case, we have the option to create an alarm. We're not gonna do that just yet. Now it's starting to do the check, uh, but the status is currently unknown because it hasn't had a check or hasn't had a chance yet to do some successive checks. We're next gonna do our US East one health check. And we're also going to set this to be an endpoint. We're also going to set this to be domain. We're also going to set this to be HTTPS. We're going to go ahead and put in that this is going to be US East 1. And we're going to do the same thing here, countries, country, slash 1. Now, as I mentioned, I think there's a ton of value in doing a dedicated health check. We could go through and create that. But just for making this concise, I'm not going to do that here. Now, the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to create one more health check, and this is going to be for our EU West one health check. And we're going to do e everything exactly the same as we had it before. <clears throat> and we just need to change the domain name here, US West one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's try this again. This is EU West one. And that gives us the domain that we need, slash countries, slash country, slash one. Perfect. So now we have everything that we need. And we're going to go ahead and hit next, and we are going to create our health check. Now we're starting to see this come in. We're starting to see, for example, that our AP Southeast One health check is coming in as healthy. And this is essential because we are going to need this as we configure our latency and failover routing for Route 53. We're going to need these health checks. But let's really quickly run through this again in terms of health checks. 
first, you want to be sure that you know what endpoint you're going to be tying to your health check. You can create multiple health checks for an endpoint and create what is called a combined health check, and a, which is a calculated health check, which takes multiple health checks into account. So if you wanted to do that, you might have three different health checks, and then you tie that in under one combined calculated health check, but you can only associate, when you create a route inside of Route 53, you can only associate one health check with that route. So that would be how you take in multiple factors. You then go in and create it using, in this case, your domain name. Be sure you set the correct protocol. In this case, we already have certificates and we're using HTTPS on each of the different routes. And then we actually can create our health check based on that. Now, we're gonna use our health checks next.